Your true SWR can only be measured at the antenna. Well, that statement is both kind of both true and false. True in that your SWR on your coax transmission line is determined by one thing and one thing only, the impedance at the antenna feed point. So, if you're using 50 ohm coax cable and your antenna feed point impedance is 100 ohms, you divide 100 by 50 and you have a 2 to 1 SWR. That is your true SWR. However, measured at the transmitter end of your transmission line, the reading could be quite different. However, it is easy to know your true SWR from the comfort of your nice, orderly ham shack. All you need is an SWR meter, a graph from the ARRL, and you need to know the characteristic loss of your feed line. Now, for example, let's say RG8X at 10 megahertz, which is where we find the 30 meter band. So here we have a chart, coax cable signal loss attenuation in dB per 100 feet. So here we have RG8X, go down to 10 megahertz, and we see that cable has a characteristic loss of 1 dB. Now, let's use that ARRL graph to find our true SWR. So here it is, a graph showing the actual SWR at an antenna based on measured SWR at the transmitter end of a transmission line with loss. So, let's say we go back to our original example. We have an SWR of uh, 2 to 1, and we're using 100 feet of RG8X at 10 megahertz. That gives us a loss of 1 dB. So here, SWR at the transmitter, we look up 2, 2 to 1, and we go up to the line, which is 1 dB loss, which is this line right here. See, 1 dB loss, 2 to 1 SWR, and we go over here to get our actual SWR, SWR at the antenna, and we see that our actual SWR is about 2.5 to 1. So why, if you have standing waves, it measures lower at the transmitter end. SWR, standing wave ratio, is really a measurement of reflected power. Now, we've done previous videos on what reflected power is on this channel. But briefly, unless you have a perfect match at the feed point, some of the transmitted power is reflected back. That's called reflected power. So, if you're transmitting 100 watts into a 2 to 1 SWR, about 10 watts will be reflected back. So, think about it. What happens to that 10 watts in its journey back to the transmitter? Well, remember, your coax has a characteristic loss of 1 dB, so by the time that 10 watts gets back to your transmitter, your meter will measure less reflected power. So the higher the coax loss, the greater the difference in what your meter says. So now let's see what happens if we have a lot of loss in our coax, like using 100 feet of RG58 on the 2 meter band. The loss would be about 6 dB, your characteristic loss at that frequency. But at the transmitter, we're measuring this great SWR of 1.5 to 1. All right, here's our graph again, showing us what the SWR really is at the antenna. So again, we have this great SWR on 2 meters of 1.5 to 1 SWR at the transmitter. But remember, we have 6 dB uh, cable loss at that frequency. So let's go all the way up to 6 dB loss, which is this last line here, and go over 
to see what our real SWR is. Whoa, our real SWR is 10 to 1, while at the transmitter, we think it's 1.5 to 1. So, we see how an SWR meter can be fooled by a lossy run of coax cable. We can also see how coax loss goes up as frequency goes up. You can use 100 feet of RG58 all day long in 80 meters, which is below 4 megahertz, even with a relatively high SWR. The loss will be low. But you would generally not use RG58 on 2 meters unless you're using a short run of coax cable. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to DX Engineering, a popular ham radio retailer. Now, I have no affiliation with DX Engineering, but you should watch their YouTube video called The Truth About SWR, Debunking the Myths and Misunderstandings. I have the link in my description. This video makes the following points, among others. Reflected power is not lost. Low SWR does not mean you have a good antenna. There is no magical length of coax cable. Now, these are the same things I've been preaching on this channel. Now, there is, I believe, one inconsistency in the video. The narrator displays the same ARRL graph that we've been using in this video, how to calculate your true SWR uh, from the comfort of your ham shack. However, at the end of the video, the narrator says the only way to know your true SWR is to measure it at the antenna. But this is a minor quibble. The rest of the video is spot on. Consider subscribing to this channel and 73.